Hi friends, welcome to Tech Insights. Today I'm back with another unboxing video. We shall unbox Apple iPad Pro 2021 model and few other accessories. Let's begin with iPad Pro itself first. By now, you should have heard all about the M1 Pro. It's a beautiful piece of technology. My reason behind why I brought this iPad Pro is very complicated. I always wanted to buy an iPad Pro ever since it was released in 2021. I was always fascinated by technology power packed in this tiny device. I was very much impressed with its portability, insane computing power, 120Hz display and full day battery capabilities. Definitely, Apple products are very expensive. Even its accessories are expensive too. This is the magic keyboard from Apple and uh, this is the Apple Pencil. It's a TPU case for iPad Pro which is very useful and comfortable for studying purpose. And uh, the other one is the screen guard. With accessories such as Apple Pencil and Magic Keyboard, you could technically use an iPad Pro as a laptop. So I have brought those accessories to show you. I'll make a separate video on unboxing accessories. In this video, I'll cover only the iPad Pro. So let's begin with the today's unboxing. If you are new to our channel, please do subscribe the channel and support us. On the box, we have pretty details like its dimensions manufactured in the month of August. Price on the box is mentioned as 94,900 but I got it for a good discount. Uh, the inbox contents are mentioned here and uh, manufactured by Apple in California. On the back we have iPad Pro, this is 11 inch third generation, Wi-Fi come cellular model, has 8GB RAM and 26GB of storage. The biggest upgrade of this generation is of course the Apple's new M1 SoC uh, which is said to deliver up to 50% faster CPU and up to 40% faster GPU performance compared to its previous generations. Here we have the iPad Pro. In the box you will find the usual documentation, SIM ejector, a 20W fast charger and a USB Type-C to Type-C cable. Apple has opted Type-C port on its iPad Pro but still it provides lightning port on its new iPhones. Apple would have opted Type-C port for its iPhones too. Hope next time it will take this into consideration. I have purchased 11 inch space grey variant and we do have a silver color variant. Also it's available in 12 inch model in the both the color variants. At first glance. The 2021 iPad Pro looks identical to the 2020 model and even 2022 too. However, there are some subtle differences. While overall size and thickness are identical, the design includes matte finish, aluminium body, the display has round corners just like the frame. I think it's not fingerprint resistible. The back of the iPad Pro has a dual camera bump on the top right corner, a large API logo in the middle and three contact pins at the bottom for connecting accessories. And this is a SIM tray. The display is identical to that of last year's iPad Pro, which is still one of the best you'll find on the tablets. The 11-inch liquid retina display has IPS LCD panel. It supports features like 120Hz refresh rate, 600 nits of brightness, true tone, color temperature adjustments. The iPad Pro 11-inch has a true depth camera setup on the front for the Face ID with a 12 megapixel sensor and a new feature called Center Stage. More about this later. When it comes to physical overview, on the right we have a magnetic connector for pencil, volume rockers and SIM tray. It's a nano sim. On the top we have two microphones, two speakers and uh, two more at the bottom. It's a quad score speaker system for studio quality sound recording and far field Siri activation. And one more at the top we have a lock button. To the bottom we have a thunderbolt port. It allows higher bandwidth connections like Apple Pro display. You can connect at 6K resolution. That's all about the physical overview. Let's power it on. As per my channel analytics, till now I have more non-subscribed views only. So please do subscribe our channel and support us and uh, before you leave hit a like to this video. It needs my password, let me connect to my Wi-Fi.
it's my first apple product and i do not have any apple id till now i guess i can skip it for now and do it later yes wonderful hmm i choose the dark one This runs on iPad OS 15.6 version, uh, which seems very polished user interface. Swiping from left takes you to the widgets. Uh, swiping from right top corner gives access to the control center, and uh, swiping from top left corner gives access to the notification. If you are still watching the video hope you liked it please do subscribe the channel and support us and uh, don't forget to hit a like to this video I have been using this for past 10 days and my initial impressions goes like this. Uh, this runs on iPad OS 15.6 version which is very polished user interface. It has a preloaded with many softwares and uh, I too have installed some other softwares. Along with the device you get a complimentary subscription of Apple TV and arcade games for a period of 3 months. Out of the box you get a uh, 15.6 version and I have updated to 15.7 now. I have purchased uh, 256 GB out of which I got uh, 230 GB I think so which is left free to use. You can have the widgets bar permanently displayed on the home screen or choose to access it with right swipe. The 11-inch iPad Pro display has high-end feel to it, delivering nearly 4 million pixels in its portable slim design with very thin brazers around the round-cornered display. Let me show you with its sleek Apple look how the visual experience on iPad looks like. From a creator's point of view, there is a plenty to make your work look great with the M1 chip. There is also an anti-reflective coating so you can use your iPad Pro in any harsh lights. Thanks to the multitasking features such as a split view and slide view. In split view, you can adjust the ratios as 50-50, 75-25 or else a 25-75 aspect ratios. You can have an infinite number of combinations, for instance let me go with the Chrome browser and the notepad. You can copy a phrase of text from an article and paste it into your notepad. It gives freedom to modify and also you can add something new.
in slide overview just drag and drop an application you can use multiple nodes as i show here or else choose a different application even you can use any number of applications if you want which takes some time to get used to it but works well once when you get hands on it that's pretty sure When it come to performance let's tackle this section in two usage scenarios first while using the ipad pro as a regular tablet and second as a productivity machine with optional magic keyboard and pencil as a tablet i was quite surprised at how light the new ipad pro 2021 model is considering its size holding it one hand and using it didn't get any fatiguing even after long stretches you can use with ease of comfort desktop level applications on ipad pro While iPads are not initially designed to replace laptops, the new iPad Pro model seems to have a hardware that could rival the MacBook Air. Plus, with accessories such as Apple Pencil and Magic Keyboard, you could technically use iPad Pro as a laptop. Am I going to do the same work on this? I could do on the MacBook Pro. With my little experience, I could say maybe not all the work that I could do on the iPad. Apple says that lot of Pro apps such as Luma Fusion for video editing, Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop for photo editing. procreate for graphic designing etc have been optimized for the m1 chip which is great but i would have loved the option of using full fledged desktop apps on the ipad for instance adobe premiere rush works uh, fine on the ipad pro and i was able to edit through multiple high resolution streams from my cameras like sony insta 360 and dj pocket to without any issues The cameras on the iPad Pro are the among the best you'll find on any tablets. The rear camera hardware supports for Smart HDR3, you'll get a 12 megapixel main camera without optimal image stabilization which can record up to 4K 60 fps video, a 10 megapixel ultra wide camera and a true tone flash. The front camera has a 12 megapixel sensor with a 122 degree field of view. It also supports Smart HDR3 and can record video up to 1080p. There is a new feature called Center Stage. It uses AI to detect your face and keeps you centered in the frame all the times. If you move around, it will automatically crop and reframe the shot to make sure you are still in the center. It works pretty well in the apps such as FaceTime, Zoom and Cisco WebEx Meet and can be toggled on and off if needed. LiDAR scanner is also optimized for the AR experiences making an exciting tool for those who are working in this space. Apps such as Clips Complete Anatomy Cam Tracker AR are already making use of this and we hope more apps on this in future. I have been using Magic Keyboard and Apple Pencil with iPad Pro for the past 10 days. During this time I rarely had fallen back to my PC for the work purpose. This is because most of the apps that I rely on for the work are already optimized for the iPad OS. The Apple Magic Keyboard is great for typing as well. The pencil is nice accessory to have but a little bit expensive. If you are into drawing or sketching, it will be more useful to you. Apart from coloring, I didn't end up using it much during this period of 10 days. I think it's not necessary to mention these are to be purchased separately both the magic keyboard and the pencil are too expensive Apple claims up to 10 hours of battery life with either web usage or video watching in fact i often ended up getting close to 11 hours of run time on a single charge with 20 watt fast charger provided i was able to charge the ipad pro to 100% in 2 hours 15 minutes Apple with M1 OS was surprisingly good. However, if you are expecting to see a massive jump in app performance, then you might be disappointed. The iPad Pro line has always been the best in class Apple OSs, but have also always been held back by the iPad OS and iPad apps. 
you might see a performance benefits in the certain m1 optimized apps compared to the previous models but the difference might be barely noticeable unless your workloads can take advantage of them the sad truth is that we may not get the desktop class apps on the ipad pro no matter how powerful the ipad gets that might be for a simple reason apple also sells laptops and desktop computers and it wouldn't want the ipad to cannibalize the sales of its other products if you are going to spend this kind of money on a tablet that 2020 ipad pro is a great device For the most people looking to experience the power of Apple M1 SoC, I think the best option is still the MacBook Air. It's the most value for the money and the way more versatile in terms of software and usability than an iPad.